Welcome back. This is Jeremiah. We have lots of Bible study here uh, lined up for today, as usual. As many of you have ascertained or know, I spend a lot of time with Bible study here, and it occupies me, you know, to the T. I mean, I, I just, I'm constantly getting ready to give videos and uh, and I'm, I'm going to shorten them so that we don't have too many. This is Jeremiah with New Covenant, and we just rejoice with you in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We have more joy, more joy, more joy. And love brings you joy. Without love, there is no joy. There's only happiness and circus, circus um, engagements. But this is agape love. And agape is ready over there. I, I have agape ready. That's going to be a bi-monthly le uh, lesson or a bi-monthly issue here. We have we have a couple of subjects that, that are here that I'm going to make bi-monthly. I, I, will, I will go over those subjects all the time. The, the rapture is obviously one of them. And so is agape. Living bread, living bread will probably be the other guaranteed then we might go to grace, and we might go to uh, praise and worship or something like that. Grace is grace and mercy, but I added peace and rest. So let's get going. Let's get going, which is Jerusalem and the Lord of the Sabbath. Let's get going. We're, we're just excited to have so much work here in front of us. I, I have lots of work here, and uh, let's get going. Let's listen to Proverbs chapter 5. And Proverbs chapter 6, I'll make a few points and we're going to shut down. Now, these two chapters are a lot of the same thing. There's punishment and then there's, of course, uh, uh, actually both of these chapters have a lot of punishment. Uh, and and that's why we're going to get through them quick. And uh, I do not want to spend a lot of time on punishment uh, for the entire year. We're, we're going to spend a little time. But we will not focus on uh, punishment. We're, we're going to start focusing more and more on the uh, the good stuff, you know. And by the way, I, I mentioned uh, uh, bi-monthly or twice a month, uh, I'm going to have a few uh, templates I'm going to read. And every one of these categories we have in this ministry, and that category is just a lesson, that's all it is. It's, it's just a subject. And, and uh, about five of these subjects I'm going to hammer home. And uh, beauty is going to be one of them, for sure. Uh, I forgot to mention that. But beauty is just like the rapture. And so is love. Love and beauty are the rapture. Love and beauty are really what Christianity is. Uh, without a doubt. Um, unequivocally, you know, uh, uh, asserted here that, that love and love and beauty are the key. And we're going to spend a lot of time. We we did a lot last year, and we're going to spend a lot of time this year talking about love and beauty because we're going to have a lot of beauty beauty talk here. We're going to have a lot of rapture talk. We're going to have a lot of uh, grace talk, and that has mercy, peace, and rest. So we'll be talking about peace and rest a lot. I'm thinking about adding grace, uh, praise, and worship too. And some of the main ideas we repeat here all the time. It doesn't mean that they're always going to be the most dominant uh, subject here. Okay? It just means that if you watch this channel, you're going to get a lot of rapture talk. You're going to get a lot of uh, what is love, what is the river of life the fountain of love and the, the throne of God and uh, what is grace and so forth and uh, what is peace? What does peace mean? What is, who is, what is the Lord of the Sabbath? What, what does that mean? And these are the issues we're going to focus on for the rest of the duration of this ministry. 
I'll throw in a couple more, but that's basically what this is about. I'm going to probably have to prioritize faith uh, also. Uh, that makes sense too. So, you know, we, 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 it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a big deal as a Bible teacher or a student, and we're all students here. There's only one rabbi. Here's the thing. You know, we, we're not going to nitpick about whether we spent 20% more of our time talking about the rapture as opposed to science or something. That's not the point here. Science is not an unimportant part of the Bible. Now, let, let, me, let me mention that before we get to, to uh, Proverbs 5 and 6. Uh, as a, a note on science quickly. Science is the forgotten subject in the Bible. Discipline is the big subject that is forgotten in the Protestant Christian Church. Discipline. It, it's not grace and works, although those are big issues. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many Mormons and, uh, and Jehovah's Je 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 Witnesses, or there wouldn't be any uh, tons of Catholics. Those are performance-oriented her heresies. It's based upon your performance. They might say 50% grace, but, but they really mean 50% your performance saves you. And we need to see performance, and we write down performance. They had that movie, The Mission, where the, where the man carried rocks up a mountain, and, and, and everyone was happy because he carried rocks up the mountain. Or you scrape your knees on the ground until they're horrible or something. We're not going to go into details on that, but I'm making a point. And the point is, is that Protestants don't think that way. We don't go there. That's going into damnable heresies. Because we say Jesus paid it all. We watch you if you work in the church. Duh. But, but, but we don't write down marks and, and, and say that you did that much and you're now saved. or uh, that's, that's nonsense. Now let's, let's get to the lesson, Jermaine, as I explain what, where I was going. And, and back to, the, just for one moment, just back to the, you know, the subject that I'm going to hammer home here. And, of course, we do have uh, the April template that I've, I've decided to use for this ministry as the basis for basic Bible study in this ministry. Okay? That is the basis of this ministry, is the April Matrix. And all that is is just a couple of subjects lined up together. And, and of course, the April Matrix is very simple. It's, it's simply make an agreement. Your dictionary calls that on the same grounds. And so you make an agreement, and the terms of the agreement are the subjects in the Bible. And they're fixed in stone. You don't add to them. They're done. The doctrine of Christianity is done. The Bible says it's done. And, and, and you're going to learn these teachings. The Master said, learn of me. That's what we're doing right now. Learn of me. The Father said, hear ye him. So it's quite obvious that the Father wants you to be drawn to the Son. Okay, we, we can't emphasize that, that enough either, right? If you're basically here to establish a master-servant relationship with Jesus Christ, which is also, uh, when, when master and servant is proper, then we can verify uh, father-child. We do the same thing over and over and over here. It's not that difficult, okay? And Christianity is based upon you and I establishing a master-servant relationship. That's priority number one. It doesn't mean you can't establish a very close father-child relationship as you establish a master-servant relationship. We do that here also. However, the reason why we emphasize master-servant is because that's what the master emphasizes. That's why we do that. Because there's basically only two dynamics for a Christian or a convert, and that is you're a, ma you're a servant to a master, and you're a bond slave. He purchased you out of jail. You were going down to the prison forever, and he went to jail and bailed you out. Now, not only did he do that, he's also your creator. 
So there's quite a few reasons why, why you might want to see him as valuable and you might want to praise him. Okay, that's the point here. But there are basically only two dynamics here. We go over it over and over. I repeat it quite a bit here. And, and, uh, and, and you know, some of these things are aleatory. I, I do not itemize all of this uh, in, the, in the subjects that I have here and so forth because I'm not here to cover every subject every day all the time. Christianity is not really meant for that. You, you were never meant to uh, clog yourself with too much information. That's what can happen here. However, that's why I have numbers, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to make... 27, I got, a, I got an inspiration from the Lord there. I'm going to make 27 uh, dynamics, or the word in the Hebrew is servant, child. I consider that very important to constantly remind you and even myself that that is the basics of Christianity pertaining to your relationship to God. Obviously, you're, he's your kinsman redeemer, so that makes, that makes him your fellow child of Adam. Uh, there's a lot of things, but, but the, those are the two I'm going to focus on quite a bit here, okay? There's, there's only two ways of looking at Christianity from, from that perspective. And, and, it, and it's important to note that, that the servant-master relationship is the key relationship. In terms of you basically being in your human body, that, that's quite obvious. When you get to heaven, uh, we, we, we might want to change this a little bit. Okay? However, since the Master did that for your life, I would go ahead and make that for eternity. In other words, the Master says, and what's that, John 13? So he said, uh, you call me Master and Lord, and that's exactly basically who I am. He didn't say, don't call me Master and Lord, call me Daddy. He didn't say that. He said, that's who I am. So that's obvious. It's obvious that that's probably the main title he wants to go by. He is everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. However, you might want to kind of stick to Master and Lord. That's my point. And if you fluctuate in calling him Father a whole lot or something, I don't see a problem with that. That's not the point. The point is, is that you hammer home the idea that he is Master big time. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned all of these commandments related to you acknowledging your role as a servant a thousand times. That's just simple logic, okay? We don't need to get out a calculator for that. If he said take up your cross six times, okay, that means he must be emphasizing um, denial and servitude six times. <clears throat> Did he say uh, your, your privilege six times? Did he say that you are, what, what's the ratio there of you being called a child and, and receiving gifts from God as a, 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 along the same lines of him calling you a servant and learning to be a servant? I mean, do, do you know the math on that? I mean, you're looking at 90% of the commandments, 80% of the commandments of the Lord are related to, uh, I'd say around 80, it could be 70, I don't know. But it's, it's obviously a big whopping uh, uh, dominant uh, uh, theme of the master. It's just right in your face. He, 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 he never said anything six times, uh, basically in his entire ministry. Did you know that? There, there are a few items, but the, the, the main thing is that, you know, he said it six times and he means it because he said it six times. That's the point. And then, then, then he hammers home, he, you know, in other ways of looking at servitude and humiliation. So that half of what he says is 
learn how to be humiliated over and over again. So, so for me as a Bible teacher, to do something else would mean that I would be uh, disingenuous. I, I, I wouldn't be uh, um, uh, honest with you as a Bible teacher. Are there a lot of people on TV or wherever who are not honest? Uh, I would say so. Come on. A, a chicken might figure it out, you know, and it's unfortunate that other humans don't, but that's just unfortunate. And Jesus said, take up your cross six times, and you watch a TV, a TV preacher or any preacher or anyone, an evangelist, anyone, and you, and you hang around them for 15 years, and you've never heard them say, take up your cross, then you might see a problem. It's just obvious. If they never say, uh, take my yoke upon you, uh, put my yoke upon you, they never say a seed must fall on the ground, he who hates his life will find his life, uh, the fellowship of the sufferings of Jesus Christ, Paul the Apostle, I die daily. If you don't hear any of that, then, then, then the red flag should go up, ding, ding, ding. We, have, we might have a clown on our hands, we have a gold brick. Because they're throwing the body of the letter away, and you're listening to them, and you should know that they're throwing the body of the letter away. That's the point. Okay. The core principles of Christianity are quite obviously related to you, at the at, when you repent and you're baptized, for you to kneel and for you to basically humiliate yourself. For you to, to, to acknowledge that you're fallen and that you want mercy and you're crying for, for the mercy of the court. That's essentially, what, that's essentially what conversion is. And people who don't want to take that attitude, uh, they're losers. That's the way it goes. And some, some people go through the motions of going through a conversion, but they never really in their heart saw themselves as being someone who needed to be forgiven or someone who, who, who needs to have some sort of permanent, I'm saved by grace attitude, and that they need God's mercy, uh, and on and on it goes, doesn't it? I'm not going to live a life of denial, uh, but I want to join the team. I'm not going to submit myself to denial, and, and if you start teaching that, I'm going to go to the guy who tickles your ear over here and gives out cotton candy to spoiled children, and that's, when I, that's who I'm running over to. As a matter of fact, I, I don't want just one person who teaches that. I want 100. Let, let's, let's get into uh, Proverbs 5. Let's go. We're going to listen to Proverbs 5 and 6. Ready? Okay. Proverbs chapter 5. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, lest thou canst not know them. Hear me now therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed, 
and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe, let her breasts satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of men are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. Okay, let's go to 6. Proverbs 6, okay? Proverbs chapter 6 My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, deliver thyself, when thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go, humble thyself, and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travelleth, and thy want as an armed man. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without tremedy. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee, when thou sleepest, it shall keep thee, and when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the proofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals, and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Men do not despise a thief, if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold, he should give all the substance of his house. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding, he that doth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. Okay. What I want to do is, I want to make a quick look at this. These are two punishment chapters. 
And we're not spending that much time on punishment. We're using overviews. We're using just uh, identifying it as, as wisdom, wise or unwise. That's what we're saying here um, for, this, for these chapters, okay? And, and you can read the details if you want. We're going to move on to seven. Uh, but before we do, let's make a couple of points before we do. And let me get, get on to the next video. Give me one break here. Marinova.